Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having an absolutely fantastic day. And without any further ado, let's jump right into it. There's a lot to cover. There's a lot of interesting news. There's a lot of... I'm very glad that people continue to be hyper enthusiastic about the cryptocurrency market despite what we've seen happening over the course of the last three months. <sighs> News, I don't know how I said that all in one breath. Um, so, the, by, I want to say by far, the most popular news story of the day. Uh, there's a guy, his name is Samson Mao. He's been in the news, I mean, countless times at this point. He's kind of, eh, kind of become the new Novogratz, Michael Saylor, where Mike Novogratz, Kathy Wood, Saylor, uh, other names, uh, used to always talk about where Bitcoin's going, and they were kind of like, the 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 2.0 of the Bitcoin evangelists, if you will. They would talk about where Bitcoin's going, how it's going to be adopted, <clears throat> worldwide need for Bitcoin, that kind of thing. They've slowed down. They're, they're not in the news as much anymore, but it's now Samson Mao. Oh, gosh. What's the other guy? The the guy from CNBC. Um, Eric Balchunas. And there's another one. These These three keep popping up over and over talking about uh, Bitcoin and its strength and where it's going to go. Samson Mao uh, became famous -er because he began to talk about where he believed Bitcoin was going to go in the next, I believe, like five to ten year period. The idea being, for those of you who have somehow managed to miss it, is that by the time we get to 2033... Everyone who's an analyst has stated at some point we would or could or should be at a five to fifteen million dollar Bitcoin. You heard that correctly. It's meant to be that in 2029 the world economically has collapsed or the dollar has faded or some, some, some what event happens. And then basically everyone rushes into Bitcoin as like the safe haven. We've seen it from, I don't even have to say the names again. All the analysts have said the same thing. And then by the time we end up getting <clears throat> into the 2030s, economically things are so bad that basically Bitcoin is kind of like the rails that we run on. The US dollar still exists in some capacity, but it is basically almost like the Zimbabwean dollar. This is the generalized idea. So Samson Mao is back again, and he's not the only one. Like I said at the beginning, it is great to see this level of enthusiasm, but it also makes me scratch my noggin when I when I hear um when I hear things like this. Uh-huh. Samson Mao, permanent $1 million Bitcoin advocate. He's one of the people who says Bitcoin is definitely going to a million dollars. And chief executive officer at a BTC adoption-focused company known as Jan3 has made yet another bullish Bitcoin statement. Now, understand when you hear these words, these are going to be... um. The word's not shocking. It's more like rid ridiculocking. That's that's shocking and ridiculous. I don't know why they both. Anyway, continuing on. Mao shared his prediction. So understand. Let me try and give you like a bit of a why. <clears throat> based on the current financial state of the world, based on the Bitcoin ETFs, like, and I mean ex nearly exclusively Bitcoin ETFs. Uh, what's happening around the world money-wise with other currencies collapsing and also this 
pro extra prolonged consolidation downward sideways period in prices that we've experienced over the course of the last three months or so, give or take. Um, the idea is that, and I've seen this from every analyst under the sun, they say that the longer the consolidation period that we've had or have or had did in the past, the longer the bull run is for the actual market. They say that consolidation periods, trending completely sideways without prices moving, regardless of how much news that we're getting that a company bought $700 million worth of Bitcoin, another one bought $300 million, and then another one bought like almost a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin, you know, in consecutive different days and the price not moving, the analysts say that this is an indication that the market is strengthening and they're getting ready to liquidate shorts and go long on the longs and all these, these other things. You with me? Probably not because I know it's confusing because every time I hear some of these things, I also, you know, my, my eyes roll into the back of my head. Mao shared his prediction <clears throat> that the world's flagship cryptocurrency will reach... 1 million US dollars per coin in 2025. So, no longer are we, I mean, I didn't think we'd ever reach this point. I, you know, <clears throat> at the beginning of this year, at the beginning of this year, th th yeah, you know, this is 2024 for me has been a relatively fast year. I'm not sure if anyone else is experiencing the year in the same way. It's moving like a bit too quick, <clears throat> but then also not quick enough, if that makes any sense. I'm anticipating things, but then I look at the, the calendar and I'm like, oh, like 17 and a half weeks have gone by without me really noticing what's going on. The beginning of this year, we heard people saying that Bitcoin was going to max out at $50,000. We got the ETFs approved. <clears throat> People began to say that we would see a $100,000 Bitcoin that morphed into a 100. You, you remember, you remember, I, I, I posted it on Twitter recently that that would morph into a $150,000 Bitcoin. And then some of the stuff that we got for this year mainly floated around $100,000 to $200,000 per Bitcoin, depending on where you land on the uh, blockchain. Yeah, I guess that's correct. The other part is 2025 at the beginning of 2024 already saw some really crazy numbers. The beginning crazy number that we saw was $200,000 a coin. Cool. That morphed into 250000 Cool. By the time we got the ETFs approved and we began to see the like avalanche of, of money flowing into this market... <clears throat> Those numbers transformed for Bitcoin's price in 2025 to 300,000, to like 450,000. Uh, Plan B is constantly posting on Twitter uh, that Bitcoin's definitely going to half a million dollars per coin in 2025. The craziest one was, I believe, 600,000. And that was meant to be like the tippy top of the of the of the mountain with all economic this and all economic that all slamming together in one perfect storm of, of, of a price. Hearing one million dollars per coin means a lot of different things. <clears throat> one, it would mean that we would have essentially uh, no, 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 not even essentially. We would have passed by the entire valuation of gold by about an extra 20% more than we even needed. Like, phew, like completely skyrocketing. The significance of a $1 million Bitcoin. So when people say these numbers out loud, it makes sense to me time phrase wise. So like, down the line, 20, 30, somewhere around there. A $1 million Bitcoin means that people have foregone the US dollar, have kind of pushed to the side 
the idea of fiat currencies. We we basically enter into a new realm where humanity, as it, this, this, this almost isn't a joke, humanity as it were has figured out that the economic system that we have right now only favors the rich. And we collectively, as a, as a species, basically come together and go, no, we need to get away from that system. And we, we get to over a billion people within our market. And this is, and this is like low level getting into the market. So this is you know a, a billion people <clears throat> throwing in a couple hundred, couple thousand dollars each into the market. This isn't all 8 billion people, and this isn't a, a, a full-on let's do this kind of thing. Because there's a huge difference between you throwing in 100, 500, 1,000, and being like, no, my life savings have to go into this so I can escape the, the old system. To say that this is going to happen in 2025 is redonkul- redonkulous is not the word because... We've seen before that basically almost anything can happen in this market. However, um, this making one of the, if not the most popular uh, news stories out there is not surprising as I, you know, we would all, I assume, love a, a $1 a one million Bitcoin. Uh, this would also mean, I mean, explicitly... That we would have around a thirty-three to forty-five thousand dollar ether, XRP would be at around a good thirty-eight and a half dollars. Like we would be getting these kinds of numbers, and I personally don't feel that the market is ready to make those leaps and bounds. And I will say, backing it up, I will say, based off of the accumulation levels that we've been seeing. A lot of people continue to be uh, dazzled by the ETFs and also terrified by any news that we get of outflows from the ETFs. <clears throat> the news that we get, and I mean on a near daily basis, for those of you who have not been here, is that whales are buying a significant amount of Bitcoin every single day. We've had, I mean, weeks, if not months at this point of whale buying news. And it it tends to constantly coincide with any news that we get of selling from the ETFs. So it appears to me a lot of times that a lot of the, uh, what do you you call it, Uh, the, the ETF news that we end up getting seems to constantly be if if we have inflows price should go up the moment we have any outflows woe is us prices go down everything is sad and awful and bitcoin can't simply compete with this idea when we had this was about a week or so ago some change uh that the german government had sold some of the bitcoin that they had and and i mean it was one one thousandth, I, I I think it was one one thousandth of Bitcoin's entire market cap. And I think the price fell by 4% that day and everyone was like, oh no, why are they selling? And it's like, well, they, 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 they can sell because it's in their possession. You know, everyone can sell their Bitcoin. But when that news came out, what people don't realize is that those coins were also bought up and purchased. So... From a logical perspective, and I say logic with a with a dunce cap on my head, uh, simply simply because logically the market should have moved a long time ago. But I get it, Bart Simpson consolidation, longs and shorts and trampolines and all these other things that people keep throwing out there to try and make sense of all the nonsense that's been going on based off of accumulation levels. And I mean also the same exact thing for Ethereum. For those of you who somehow managed to matrix dodge that news, uh, the amount so of all the Ethereum that exists, only ten percent of that is on crypto exchanges. Only ten percent, and the number is going to continue going down because that's all that there is left 
to actually buy Ethereum by all logic, if 90% of Ether is no longer available for trade and is locked into a system, a mechanism is being staked, we should have at least doubled or tripled in price. You cannot have any commodity of any sort. If we heard that of all the gold and silver that there was, that 90% of it would never hit the market or had been locked up in a vault or something. You would see the prices of these things rise. You know, that's how logic works. And we've seen the amount of Bitcoin on exchanges also continue to drop. What have you. So the million makes sense, but it also sounds crazy. I was kind of with everyone with the 300 to half a million dollar predictions. It seems doable. It seems like, you know, it might be a bit of a stretch, but we can definitely get there in 2025, especially with these accumulation levels. A million dollars means that we've we've seen some 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 kind of a of a heavy economic worldwide collapse. And for those of you who weren't here in 2020, uh, when we did see a, remember the past, a the, the worldwide economic collapse, Bitcoin also collapsed right along, r- right along with it. Mao tweeted that Bitcoin is likely to skyrocket, even though many people may doubt this. I don't think that many people, so now t- tell me, tell me your sentiment as well, because maybe it's just me. I don't think that people are doubting a skyrocket, a pump, a movement up in price, the the bull market. <clears throat> From what I've seen and I've contextualized myself is that people are annoyed with the lack of movement in general. Over three months to see no movement, especially if you've been following this channel, this channel, geez Louise, this channel daily. You've seen the constant either ETF inflow news or the company buying news or the micro strategy buying news or this you 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 name it. It's all there. And then to see prices go down, this is what I think has angered people or annoyed people or kind of I don't think people doubt that the market's going to go back up per se. It's just more of a why for the course of 90 plus no I I think we're over 100 days where we were, didn't the market move based off of any logical news that we were actually getting? And then to throw out the idea that regardless of the fact that we should be over $120,000 per coin, just just based off of pure accumulation alone, and then to throw out the million dollar number, that's what I think is, uh, you know, Uh, getting a lot of people. He said, you may doubt Bitcoin will reach 1 million within the next year, but you'll see. And then he he tweeted, someone uh, someone holding a chicken uh, playing a, a mini piano. So you can tell me what you think that means, but I assume probably absolutely nothing. Um, the predictions continue to roll in. I mean, maybe two or three times a week. The, the the word's not even optimism anymore. People really are believers that we are going to surge. We are going to move. We are going to propel ourselves into the stratosphere. And that is going to, uh, how do I say it? Bring about some like new age of something. You understand what I'm saying? The the predictions are, are constantly, not only are we going to move up, but it's going to happen so fast that people won't even realize that it's happening or it'll happen while you sleep. And I think we're going to get there. The last three, I mean, literal three months have been a bit of a wake up call for me as far as what companies and institutions can do and are willing to do to make sure that they fill their bags. Sometimes I have to, I do have to sit here myself and I and I have to contemplate like reality. <clears throat> and I think back to 2018, 2019, 
when we, me and you, we would sit here and we would see the lack of movement in the market. And it was kind of like a like a woe is us kind of period, like why aren't things moving, even though we were hearing all these institutions were getting into the market. We get to the end of 2020, 2021, the market's ripping and roaring. And I think we're just kind of back in that space once again, where remember the Wyckoff chart, where it shows the institutions are basically in charge and they're moving the market and all these other things. You have these instances where you think that things kind of won't happen or won't take place because you get kind of used to where you are. Not to sound like remotely uh, philosophical, but you understand, like this is where I think the market has kind of been, but we've been here before several other times through several other cycles. And I, you know, I, I look forward to the moments where the market's going up so much that we've forgotten these moments. We've forgotten the dredge. We've forgotten the slowdown. We've forgotten the the lack of movements. And then we have to worry about the next part is where we get to the like the euphoric phase where we think that it's going to last forever, which is also a, a huge, gigantic uh, market sentiment as um as well. Yeah, that's the uh, people <clears throat> continue to be incredibly bullish on the market. It's very nice to see. I would love nothing more than to see a $1 million Bitcoin. I mean, even if it takes us 10 years, but next year would be quite dandy uh, because that would, li I mean, you want to talk about all of you being able to retire? Like that is a, that's a check, you know, keep, you know, that's a, that's a definite then. Uh, yeah, whales continue to buy institutions are buying every time, every time that we've seen any kind of outflow from the ETFs, we've, I mean, hours later, we've gotten whale bought three times as much as that news. That's the Samson Mao thinks that Bitcoin is going to a million dollars next year. If it does, I'll make a video being like, what? Samson Mao's a genius. And yeah. Let's move on. Also in incredibly popular news as well. And I can't knock it. Zero <clears> percent. <throat> we are in what might be the golden age of optimism for the cryptocurrency space. Across the board. Now, when I scroll on Twitter, usually the way that algorithms work, from what I understand, is that if you hover over something, it's more likely to give you something of a, of a similar fashion. I tend to just keep scrolling on Twitter to see what's happening, what's out there. You may see I'm more on Twitter now than I've probably ever been before. The optimism for Cardano is through the living roof. People on Twitter are obsessed with Cardano. The optimism I'm seeing for Dogecoin or any kind of an animal coin, through the roof. Ethereum bulls, through the roof. Uh, anything to do with, with Bitcoin, People are completely losing their minds talking about where the market's going, telling other people not to sell, keep hodling, you know, what have you. Winners are made by people who don't sell, like that, that, that kind of thing. XRP bulls are maybe like a smidge higher than everyone else. If you don't know anyone who likes XRP, this may seem confusing to you. You might think... You might sit there and think and hear Samson Mao say the words, Bitcoin's going to a million dollars, and you think, wow, that man is, is bullish. People within, and, now, now, and I will say this, we have heard confirmation that the people from Ripple are officially working with central banks. We've heard dozens of banks. A lot of them are under NDA, non-disclosure agreements, 
what have you. We do know that it's happening. We, you know, I don't have to recap all the things that they're doing, but cool. People are translating this into a, a price jump that I didn't think people would ever... Someone named Vandal Aljara, a financial commentator and the co-founder of Black Swan Capitalist, has implied that XRP could go to five... Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Backing it up. He said that you could take 5,000 US dollars and turn it into $2.9 million. Hold on a second, because it does make sense. He said you could take $5,000 and make it into $2.9 million. Aljara, who runs Black Swan Capitalist, platform with his brother, suggested in a post on Twitter, and someone, and I, and I keep saying, I, I keep seeing people telling me to stop calling it Twitter and call it X. You don't own the company. I can call it whatever the heck I want. I'm going to call it Boobala from now on just to make sure that everyone gets really upset. None of, none of you, none of you own Twitter. None of you own X. None of you, I, I assume 80% of you don't own a company. So you getting upset that I'm not calling a website a letter? You can always, I mean, if you can go outside and like just go for a jog, it'll clear your head so much. He posted on Boobala while discussing XRP's historical price performance and its potential for more substantial gains during this bull market. Where's the thing? He basically came out with the idea of its 2016 performance. For those of you who were not here, he wrote on Boobala, if you had invested $5,000 in XRP in January of 2016, when it was half of one cent, and sold it at its all-time high of $3.84 in January of 2018, your $5,000 investment in January would have grown to $2.9 million by January two years later. I won't lie to you. It actually hurts to see that. It stings a little bit. I think sting is also a bit of an understatement because it's one of those, you know how like the the, the phrase in English is um, hindsight is 2020. This is about 70, 70 now. This one, this one actually hurts to, to even um, think. Can you, what? And you know what's even crazier is that there were there were people out there who put like 10k into XRP and made six million dollars. A lot, a lot, a lot of the XRP news, price prediction, people talking about where things are going, revolve around the old numbers. So therefore, if you will, it makes sense. It looks like as if, at the time of me making this video, that we could be on the cusp of the end of the lawsuit. We've heard the people from Ripple say when the lawsuit is over, they're going to go public. P people think that when they go public, it'll put XRP further into the spotlight and more companies and institutions and corporations are going to want to buy large amounts of XRP. We also have the stable coin that's coming out, which is also going to be used by governments around the world as their central bank digital currency or something along those lines. And as the stable coin gets used, XRP is also getting burned. The stable coin goes on to crypto exchanges, even if it becomes the, the fourth or fifth most used stable coin out there. It's burning a huge amount of XRP. The more XRP that gets burned, the higher the price goes. The higher the price goes, the more people get into the market, get into the space, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, It does make sense. And I, th there is no like comma to that. It just simply does make sense. I think we've just entered into or are in and have been in a very peculiar period of history where XRP's price hasn't really moved and I and I heard someone say it and you know what bless your heart you know if you don't have anything nice to say don't say anything at all 
people keep forgetting that Ripple is under an in a, a four year lawsuit. So a lot of times years ago, we <laughs> we heard people from the SEC and more so Gary Gensler. Uh, constantly mentioned that cryptocurrency prices were being manipulated or moved and yada yada. And the, the, the only person who's, who's done it has been Gary Gensler. Uh, making sure that the, the price of XRP has been suppressed. But you know, no one's going to ever look into that because you don't regulate the regulators and you don't figure out who the corrupt people are and then you get them out of power. Um, yeah, this is also... you you you. You probably believe it. Very popular news. Um, it's floating around out there for a number of different altcoins uh, that we are going to see spectacular new highs and stuff like that. Part of me remains lightly conservative in my numbers as far as where I think we're going to go. I will tell you right now, this is not financial advice in any way, shape or form. I think a $10,000 Ether is more or less in the cards. Do I think a $38,000 Ether? I'm lightly, lightly cringing there. I can totally foresee a $10, $15, and, I, and I'll dare even say an $18 XRP. Uh, 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 I'm, I'm seeing some people throwing out $300 XRPs, and I'm like, I think we can get there once Bitcoin is at a million plus dollars. You understand what I'm saying? Um, I'm seeing a lot of Litecoin hype, which I think is very, very nice. A lot of people talking about Litecoin. Oh, what, what did I call it? Bubala? Kappa, I, don't, I forgot what I was calling Twitter. Um... You know, it's nice to see all the optimism there. I haven't seen any crazy Litecoin numbers. That that might be one of the few altcoins where I'm not seeing anything crazy. Um, it's nice to have the optimism. And the way that bull markets tend to run is that when we start hitting high numbers, more price predictions end up making their way into the market. And I think we'll have a bit of an easier time by the end of this year, the beginning of next year, as to where things go. But even then, every summertime of the year after the halving also sends us somewhere into the, the, into the sky as well. So who knows where we're going to land? Like who, I mean, who knows? I could see a $280,000 Bitcoin. I can see a $14,000 Ethereum, you know, I, I can see us, you know, hitting brand new crazy all time highs, but I think collectively, mentally, we all kind of have to be there um, because the last couple of months, at least to me, have not really made a lot of sense. Yeah, I guess that's the altcoins are popular news. I'm not really sure um, if... If people are able to put 5,000 into any altcoin and make 2.9 million this year, I, I'll, I'll golf clap for you. I don't know what I can do for you in your honor. You probably, you know, you'll have made $3 million and you, you won't even really care anymore what's happening. Okie dokie. Yeah. I think that's going to do it for this video. A lot of weird stuff happening in the news. A lot of stuff about like... Um, uh, banks not doing well. We're seeing like a little smidge of a uh, terrible bank news popping up once again. So um, I I know, and I and I'll say this: I, I was going to ask what everyone's buying, what everyone's investing in right now. Um, but I, you know, whatever, what what have you? Um, I know that a lot of people are buying stuff. I'm also buying as well. Um, it's kind of one of those moments where like I, if I can be honest with you, years ago when I got into the market, I mean, I threw in, I think a couple hundred dollars. I, I, I think the most that I put into the market in 2016, 27, I mean, was maybe around like three or four thousand dollars. The market was still very new to me and it's kind of one of those what do you call it? 
um, inside looking in kind of thing where like I know the possibilities of the market and where things can go and how much money can be made and even more so how much money I could have made. That's why I said like, you know, looking at that, the idea of putting five, if I had a time machine, $5,000 to make three million is, a, is, is not a little insane. It's impossible to do in any other market. So I sit here sometimes, I'll tell you, looking at numbers like that, and I'm like, no, I have to, you know, go big or go home. So I'm constantly buying different coins, I'm investing into different markets and stuff like that because I personally don't want to miss out any more than I assume that I already have, if that makes any, um, any kind of sense. Yeah, I think that's going to do it for this video. I do sincerely hope that you have all enjoyed. I do hope you all are having a great day. Morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever the heck you might be. <laughs> There's that chicken again. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See?